Okay, fam. Okay, family, listen, we're getting ready to go into Bible study again. We got about a minute. Give a call to a loved one. Prepare yourself to, um, let's hear what God has to say to us, for us, about us, okay? So, if you would, saints, prepare yourself. Let me move here. Prepare yourself, but gear your mind up to receive. Receive um, the things that God has set before us. Okay. All right, saints. So what we're going to do, we're going to take off here. You know where we're going, guys. We're finishing up the book of Acts. Um, we're just in the, the beginning part of the last chapter of the book of Acts. So if you would, I want you to gear your minds up, set your heart to receive um, God's word in what he has for us in the book of Acts. Now, as we always do, saints, when you're getting ready to deal with spiritual things, you have to put on the armor of God. So let's put on the armor of God. Let's go from the natural into the spiritual. And that is to say, let's go into prayer, saints. Let's go into prayer and we believe God every step of the way. Is that okay? So with that said, with head, heads bowed, if you can, let's go before his throne. Father, we honor you. We bless you. We thank you for who you are and for all that you have done. We thank you, Lord, for the doors that you have opened, the ways that you have made, and how you have provided for us throughout this day. We thank you, Lord, that you have us in the land of the living, Lord. And with everything that we have faced this day, we thank you, Lord, that you have gotten us through it. We thank you for the heart and the mind that you have given us with everything that we had to take on today. Our hearts and minds were set with a purpose to get here, to hear the word of God. Now, Lord, I ask you, please, do not disappoint your people because of the servant which you use. If there's anything that I have done, Lord, that is displeasing in your sight, if I have thought it, if I have said it or done it, Lord, I plead the blood of Jesus that you forgive me of it. That I may be, Lord God, a pure vessel that you can use and speak to your people. Oh, Father, I plead the blood of Jesus right now that you bless your people that they have an ear to hear what the Spirit of the Lord says unto their bodies. Lord, that they may be able to take in your word, apply it to their lives, and see the benefit thereof. So, Lord, I pray for three different groups of people this this moment, Lord, and that is one. For the ones that are here right now, I pray that their minds are made ready, Lord God, that they remove any distractions, Lord, that they may stay focused to hear what you have to say, that they may not allow the enemy to steal that which is given unto them. Lord, also, I pray for those that, Lord, that will be joining us shortly, Lord. I pray that you get them to a safe place, Lord. Help them to stay focused on what they're doing until they're able to get with us, Lord, and be able to study and hear the word of God for themselves. And to those that will not be here with us for whatever reason, Lord, I plead the blood of Jesus that you may lay it on their hearts, that they may find their way, Lord, to learn exactly what it was that was taught this night that would be beneficial to them. Help them to search it out, Lord, for themselves at a later time, that they may be able to receive whatsoever you have laid out for thy people. So with that said, Lord, of my own free will, I give the Holy Spirit the power of attorney over this message right now. Let him bind the enemy that we may be able to, Lord, have a mind to hear what the Spirit of the Lord has to say. I want to say thank you, Lord, for this time. Work with me, Lord, as I begin to speak to thy people, that your people may have a clear understanding of thy word. Now, for doing this, Lord, we're careful to give your name the praise, the glory, and the honor. Now, this prayer, we ask the Holy Spirit to deliver to the Father, for it is both in the name and under the blood of our Lord and our Savior. For you are Jesus. You are the Christ. If you agree with that prayer, saint, say amen. Okay, so we're in Acts, the 28th chapter, and we had only covered three verses. And again, guys, it's all about quality, not quantity. We have, is no specific time. If the Lord wants to stay on one verse, as long as we can get plenty out of that one verse that will grow us or keep us for this week, that will be more than sufficient. And so what we're doing, guys, we're going back. I'm going to rehearse quickly the three verses that we had last week, and then we will touch on us, and then we move to new information. Now, if you will, in Acts the 28, um, 28 chapter and verse number one, here's what the word says. It says, it says, and when they had escaped, then they knew that the island was called Melita. And the barbarous people showed us no little kindness for for they kindled a fire and received us, everyone, because of the present rain and because of the cold. And when Paul had gathered a bundle of sticks and laid them on the fire, there came out a viper out of the, 
out of the heat and fasting on his hand. Now, a couple of things that we was jumping in and beginning to learn, guys, we were letting you know that sometimes when you're, uh, you're not going to know what God is going to lead you to, or you're not going to know where you're going until God get you there. And see, that's what we was pointing out to them. They did not know the island that they were on until they got there. So many of us always want to know an answer to things that uh, uh, before we move. We want to know, uh, we want clear direction to a thing. That's not faith, guys. Now, God don't do foolishness. But faith is sometimes you got to walk forward and not knowing what God is taking you. As long as you know his voice, as long as you know his voice, saints, you can then trust God whatsoever he may lead you. And so that's where it was. They got to this island and they did not stress about this because they didn't, um, did not know the name of the island until they got there. And when they got clarity as to where they at, then they could get their bearings about, about where they are in this, um, this journey that they're in. So sometimes um, you just won't know what God, uh, what God is going to take you until he gets you there. Don't stress it. Just know when you're with God, you are not lost. You without God, you're completely lost. So I would rather be with God in a place I do not know than rather be without him in a place that I do know. Because being in a place with God that I do know, being in a place with God that I don't know is in a safe place. But being in a place that I do know without God is a dangerous place. So your job is to trust God every step of the way to allow him, know his voice, guys, know his voice, that he may be able to go with you. And then we were just saying, guys, in verse number two, we were just hitting on, it says, um, you have to do unto others as you want them to do unto you. Um, and understand you have something to offer. These were not some highfalutin people that was here. It says these are barbarous people who showed us no little kindness. And so, no, they didn't have um, um, top of the line this or that or serving the top of the line food and things. No, what they had, they gave to Paul and the people that was there. And we have learned, guys, um, we touched on last week. I can promise you if you are drowning, you do not check the person's credentials. When a hand is reaching out to help you. And so these people didn't have much, but what they had, they gave. And that's why you should do unto others as you have them to do unto you. You may not have the degree. You may not have all these things. But listen, it doesn't take much to sit down and just listen to a person talk. To listen to a person express themselves. And sometimes, saints, that's what you're going to have to do. You have to just sit down and listen. Listen to people. Or what you have to offer, do just that. No, you may not have a five-course meal to offer them, but sometimes a sandwich is going to have to do. And so you do have something to offer to the people of God or offer to anyone that's in need. And so use what you have. And that's what the people was there. Because when there's a situation when it's raining and it's cold, I don't care the brand name of the coat that you put on me. Only thing I care about is it's warm. And so quit saying because I'm not this person or because I don't have this, I can't do much for the Lord. Again, guys, keep it in mind always. A little with the Lord is a lot. A lot without the Lord is still a little. Because a coat can warm a person, but a coat can't comfort a person. So what you have to do, guys, is be that person that's, be will that's willing to be there to comfort one and walking them through. And last in verse number three, guys, we was, <laughs> we was dealing with sometimes when you're doing everything, you, when you're not sitting around letting moth grow up under your feet. You're about the business and doing what you can. And so what you're going to have to do is trust God every step of the way. And that's what Paul was doing right there. After everything he had just came through with um, the, the mental strain of not knowing, only thing Paul had, guys, to hold on to was the word of God. Sometimes you got to hear God's voice and hold on to that. Even when everybody tell you you're crazy, all I know is I know what my father's voice sounds like and I won't move until I hear from him. And so that's what you have to do. And that's where Paul was. So when Paul got to the island, he wasn't just sitting around with his feet up and he wasn't looking at selfish things about what he could do for himself. There was a, there were people that were in need. And so what was Paul doing? He was going out and he was picking up sticks so he can get a fire to make sure everybody stayed warm. And what happens? A snake comes out and bite him. Now you're looking at this whole situation. He's only trying to help. That's amazing. You have some people that put the two R's in sorry and they sit back and do nothing. And yet you're trying to do everything. And yet they, you seem like you are being penalized for trying to help. And the sorry people sit back and say, that's why I don't do nothing because I, I, I don't know what's out there. Guys, come on. You give your best. Do your all. Do what you can. So you have to remember always, guys, you got to keep in mind. Sometimes people just, um, um, sometimes problems just keep coming. 
Problems just keep coming no matter what you do. You can do all of the right things and problem shows up. So when it, um, and sometimes you just think, man, when it rains, it pours. I just escape with my life. I just escape with my life. Just to get bit by a snake and die. <coughs> That's not what God is going to do. That's not the way God do a thing. Excuse me. So God works this thing out to what God is saying. No, 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 no. That's not the way it's going to happen. If I saved you, God says, I got you. I got you. So with that said, I want to touch a basis before we move any further. And when you do that, which God called you to do, yes, trouble going to come. The devil is going to try to deter you from doing the things of God or trying to move and um, showing yourself work. Faith without works is dead. You can have all the faith you want to. You can have, Paul could have had all the faith he wanted to right there, dealing with those people, but that ain't going to bring warmth. Okay, Paul had to get working and get some sticks on the fire so the fire can keep going to get the people warm. And so sometimes, guys, look at this again. Let's look at three as we move it forward. Again, it says, and when Paul had gathered, gathered a bundle of sticks and lied them on the fire, there came a viper out of the heat and fastened on him. Just because he was doing the right thing. Sometimes, guys, you're doing everything that God has called you to do, and it seems like the bottom falls out. But I want to and show you something what the Word of God says. Go with me to the book, um, uh, go with me to the book of... Psalms, Psalms, in Psalms, the, um, the 34th chapter, Psalms 34, I'm going to read this to you, in verse 17, 18, and 19, this is for every believer that seems like no matter what you do, the bottom falls out of this thing, when you do good, as the word said, when I would do good, evil was always present, so the devil is always going to be there bothering you when you do the right thing, but listen what the word of God says, here. it says, the righteous cry, and the Lord heareth heareth and deliver them out of all of their troubles. The Lord is nigh unto them that are of a broken heart, of a broken heart, and serve such as of a contrite spirit. Many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord deliver us out of them all. Now, guys, what you're looking at and pointing to here is God is saying, when you do the right thing, I got you. Yeah, uh, problems going to come after you. Yeah, you're going to go through some trials. Yeah, for the sake of doing that which is right, hard times are going to come. But the word says, many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord deliver us out of most of them. No, a lot of them. No, all of them. The Lord deliver us out of all of them. So what you have to do is believe God and trust God every step of the way. You need to know that God has your back. Even when you're doing the right thing and you get bit for doing the right thing, what is your motives? God is not looking at so much of what you do. It's why are you doing what you do? Because some people do a thing to look good in front of everybody. You have your reward. But some people just want to serve. And it seems like the ones that just want to serve are always the ones that are taken advantage of. But are you serving for the cause of Christ? Meaning, Lord, there's no agenda behind this. I just want to help people that need help. God sees. God knows. And God will see you through. Okay? And so that's what you need to do. Keep that in heart. Keep that in mind always. And know that God loves you. And God will bring you out of all of these situations. But you got to stay focused. you got to believe God. And you have to get busy. You got to get busy doing something. I know, guys, your uh, faith is a muscle, a spiritual muscle. And anybody knows about a muscle, anytime something has happened to you, something has broken, or you go to um, the hospital and they put you in therapy, therapy is going to hurt you because they have to build back that which is broken. And a muscle unused is painful when it comes to using it. But so it is with faith. Faith can be very painful when you first start using it. But the more and more you use that muscle, the better and better it looks. The better and better you feel. So, guys, you have to get started somewhere. So, even though sometimes you're going to get bit by a poisonous viper, let's trust God and see what God has to say about this. Okay, now verse number four, we was at. He says, And when the barbarian people saw the venomous beast hanging on his hand, they said amongst themselves, no doubt this man is a murderer whom, though he has escaped from the sea, yet vengeance suffers him not to live. So here's the thing, guys. Now remember, Paul is only doing 
what he's supposed to do. What, well, what he's charged to do, and that's serve. And we as believers are charged to serve. And because of him serving, this snake jumps out and bite him. And because of that, immediately, people draw an assumption. And then they want to add on and say to him or, or try to now assassinate his character. You don't know this man. Your superstitions is, does not facilitate if a person is right or wrong. And that's what they did because of their superstitions. They believe that death was trying to get him. Now, how are you going to look at the glass? Half full or half empty? Now, he says, well, they're saying, well, he's got to be an evil man because although he don't suffer coming from the sea, yet, yet a snake don't bit him. Death going to get him. But well, why can't we look at it and say death don't try two times and ain't able to get him? It's how you look at it, saints. Don't look at it always. Why well, I'm always going through trouble. Why well, I'm always going through trial. So why I always have to have the, the hard stuff to follow me. Maybe God tapped you on the shoulder and said, what I need done right now, you're the best person to get it done. Don't look at it as a curse. Look at it as a blessing as the father tapped you and say, right now, I want to show off, uh, show off my, um, show off what I, I have accomplished in my saints. I want you to be one. That's going to show off in all the spiritual world to show that even in a crisis time, they're going to honor me. Understand, saints, when God tap you on your shoulder, it may be because God wants you to be the one to show off on behalf of the kingdom. And so that's what was going there. So they're looking at him and they're saying um, they have already drawn or, or trying to soil his reputation or trying to give him a reputation. But see, your job is to just honor God, obey God. Your job is to do what you have to. God will take care of that. I don't care what assumption people have about you or what lie people may tell on you or what superstitions they may uh, point at you. Understand something. All of that will wear off when it comes to almighty God moving on your behalf. Look at guys. And so I was just stressing. It says people who don't know you. People who don't know, um, don't know you or don't know your, um, what am I looking for? It's a word that I'm looking for. It could be people that don't know your reputation and they would try to just draw one or just give you one. Your, your, that's it. Your personality. People that don't know your personality. People can always make an assumption about you. They would look at you and just look at, look at you and try to assume the type of person you are. <laughs> it's hard to grasp a person that you, you really can't put a hand on. I'll take, for instance, me. I'm a very bubbly and outgoing person. But if you don't know me, if you don't know me, you would think I'm funny acting. You would think, now the saints y'all know me, y'all see, Pastor Ruiz. But people that don't know me, when I go into a new environment, I'm very quiet. I'm standoffish. And I'm observing. I'm learning. I'm not going to be the one in the life of the party. That's not me. That's not me. I'm sitting back and I'm observing. And it may seem like I don't know what to think about him. And you say, well, that's not him. He's a very outworn person. But people don't know your reputation. And so they don't know Paul. And they're just looking at the circumstances around Paul. And they're trying to now then tag Paul with that's who he is. Well, he's a murderer. But no, God will fight for you, people. God will fight for you. So we're not going to make an assumptions about anybody. What we're going to do is just take a little time. Take a little time. And so that's why, again, look at again what is taking place. Now, these are bar barbarian people. Barbarian meaning these are not very educated people. When they say these people are barbarians, that means they are not up to date. Um, when you go to a third world country, if you will, um, to see how people live, we are in the Western world. We look at that like, no, we're, why are you living like that? They don't have access to the things we have access to. So these were not people that had all of the access to the things that um, the Romans or um, the Jewish people had at that time. And so then there was a barbarian people that saw a venomous beast hanging onto his hand. They um, said amongst themselves. Now that's one thing about it. They just spread in rumors. It's going to be people just spread rumors. They said amongst themselves. No doubt this man is a murderer. I mean, I have no doubt. He's got to be. I mean, it's clear to see these are soldiers. These are prisoners. That's, that, that's a murderer right there. People are going to assume. And they're going to try to tag a label on you. You just keep loving the Lord. Keep obeying God. Keep doing what God has called you to do. Trust me, whatever tag they put on you, God is going to wear it off. Your job is to love the Lord and just do what God said to do. Now, let me tell you this before I move forward. Sometimes people are going to draw something about you and they don't want to know anything different. 
No matter what you show them, they're going to keep it in their mind. That's what it is. Some people are just hateful. Some people are just hurting. And some people are ones that just take and, and they see um, what God has done for you. And because you have a nice uh, personality or life, they don't like it. They angry at you because you're not suffering internally like they are. And so sometimes it's just because of the bubbly that you are. People are jealous and drink a lot of haterade as they speak and talking to you or want to see you hurt. Always acting like you happy. That ain't nothing but a front. Look, you're always acting like you say it, but it look like it's real. So the thing is, we want to stand firm and believe God every step of the way. So they're going to judge you because of what they see. This is the only thing they know. This is the only thing they know from their customs and traditions. This is what they know. But God is saying, I, I got something for your customs and your traditions. What happens when your customs and your traditions run up to a living God? Everything your custom says should be or your tradition said do. God says, no, I'm going to flip it. We're going to do it the opposite way. And you still holy. So how does it go with that? So he's saying they doubt, they're whispering among themselves, and they spread the word. Now that right there is a murderer. And so when people tag you with something, people that you can help, will sometimes drift away from you because they heard this rumor about you. They heard this rumor about you. So you got to be able to know the person or know something about the person. So they just say, no, no doubt he's a murderer whom, though he has escaped from the sea, yet men just suffer him not to live. And so that's what it is. You got to be able, but look at this right here. Now that's your, that's all of their, um, if you would, their assumptions, their, um, their, but nevertheless, this is what he says in verse number five. He says, and he shook off the beast into the fire and felt no pain. He felt no harm. No effect. What happens when everything you know is supposed to be? Don't. Now we know it is clear a venomous viper. And you're looking at this animal when they are afraid. Now, I was, it's amazing. Um, snakes, um, venomous snakes can gauge how much poison they put into the victim or um, poison into whatever they're striking. Um, now, I, I, I don't know. I could just go by what it said. They size it up. You can look at the size of something and say it's going to need this much. Animals are very, uh, very wise. They live in the wild, so they know how to handle this. So a venomous snake, if you're looking at this, and he have a bundle of sticks, well, trust me, that snake is in the sticks. He already sees you. He has already sized up. This is a pretty, you know, it's a big beam, whatever it is, is looking at me. Think about a snake to the size of a human. And so he puts the, um, he puts the wood on the fire. Now the heat burns the snake and the snake comes forward and latches on. He's going to give him all this poison. But look at what God says. But God, but God, poison in the hands of God is not poison at all. And so he says, and he shook off the beast into the fire and felt no harm. And felt no harm. So these are the people that have already tried to soil your reputation. They have put rumors out about you. These are the people that have talked about you. That were some people that you can help won't come near you because of the rumors that's out there about you. But God says, no, 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 no. I got your help. I have your help right here. So let me make it clear who's on my side. Because God protect those that are his. And so what he's saying here is God looked up and says, and he shook the and he shook off the beast into the fire and felt no harm. He felt no harm. When you are doing God's will, God will take care of you. That's why you guys I just need to understand when you're doing God's will, God says, I, I've got you. Now they are trying to destroy his reputation, but now God has spoken up on his behalf. And the same one, no one wanted to be around. Now all of a sudden, they all want to run and flock around. Why? They have seen something different. All of our customs and laws and everything we know says this. But I'm looking at this. And now I'm curious. I told you guys, I've used this analogy before. And it's something that I say is um, for fun. But it has a purpose in what I'm saying here. So if for you guys that have not heard this, I want to say this again. Um, have not heard it. I want to say this to you. To you, if you have heard this analogy before. Okay, go with it, guys. But I want you to think about you. And I say this. You are out jogging. You are jogging and you got this straightaway piece of land and there are no cars on the road. There is nothing there but a straightaway, no trees or anything. And you just jogging. You're fine. You got your earbuds or whatever in and you're jogging. And all of a sudden you see something 
in front of you moving and you focus in on it and you find it to be a large, say, 185 pound Rottweiler and it's coming up to you closer and it's coming up closer and it crouches down and the hair stands up on his back and he shows you his canines as he begins to growl and he's looking at you and the dog comes right up at you and says, meow. Now, think about that. What would you do under those circumstances? Now, because of the curiosity is there, danger is still right there in front of you, but, but you don't see something you've never seen before. You don't heard something you never heard before. And so to make sure you haven't went crazy, you listen again. And the dog says, meow. So you're sitting here like, ah, this don't make sense. This sound should not come from this. So what are you saying? The point I'm making is he shook the beast off into the fire. Now, what it is, is, is okay, hold on. You're looking at God's power moving. And so now people are locked in and took focus. Just as that dog, as vicious as that dog is, it's still dangerous. But he has caught your attention and you're now looking in on this thing very close. Why? Because you're seeing something unusual. You're hearing something unusual. So we see in this beast bite onto this man and he takes it and throw it off into the fire. So think about that. I want you to keep that in mind. When you're doing the will of God, God says, I got you. And let me tell you something before we move forward. You cannot die until you finish God's will. When you're walking in God's will, see, in the midst of all of this, God already told Paul he's going to Rome. So I don't care what happens in between when God told him and he get to Rome. We do know one thing, no matter how much of the winds, how much of the storms, no matter how many vipers, no matter how many people come after him. If God said back here, he's going to Rome and he's not at Rome yet, let God be true and every man be a liar. He's going to Rome. So of all the things we see with Paul, and it's a roller coaster ride looking at all this, he's not going to die because he's got to get to Rome. And so that's what he's saying there. But look at verse number six, guys. So we're saying um, in verse number five, um, you're just doing God's will. God, is gonna, God, God will take care of you. Doing his will, he will take care of you. But the people have seen something that they're accustomed to seeing. Now God finna show them something that they have never seen. Verse number six. It says, how be it, they look, they being the barbar uh, barbarian people, the people there. It says, how be it, they look when, look when he should have swollen or fallen, fallen down dead suddenly. But after they had looked a great while and saw no harm come to him, they changed their minds and said that he was a god. Okay, let's look at some things here. Now, the same people, the same people that put your business out there and made you this person and put all the rumors out there about you, it's now the same people running around saying, you're a good person. That right there is a good person. I'm going to tell you right now, that's a God. See, that's what it was with Paul. First of all, they said he was a murderer and he should die. And now they've seen something they've never seen before. And now they're saying he's a God. But let me deal with this first thing first. How be it? They look, it says, how be it? They look when they should, look when he should have swollen or fallen dead. Okay, we know about this time. Something should happen because we were sure that this venomous viper latched on to him. Now, doubters are always going to find something. To, how we know it was a viper? I mean, I don't know if it was a viper. They could have they, they not known. Those people was on that island. They know what vipers were. I'm sure people have been bit many times on there so they knew what they were looking at. So these people are sitting here looking and knowing what it was and they know about this time. This is what should be happening right now. He should be swelling. And at this time they said, this man should have been dead. So the issue you're looking at right here is they're saying they're looking at God moving. Remember, first time in verse number five, they looked at what was normal, a snake biting him. A venomous snake biting him. But verse number six, they seeing something they never seen before. See, people are watching you very closely. They're watching you very, very closely. And God wants them to see something they never seen before. Some people have heard about God, but some people never seen God move on their behalf. With the lifestyle that you used to live, with the reputation you used to have, 
with the way you used to go. God has changed that, flipped that, and now people are seeing something they have never seen before. God takes something totally broken and fix it. Or God taking something solid and breaking it. And that's what you have looking at right there. And so that's what they say. Now, it's something I want you to understand. Look at this latter part. But after they had looked a great while and saw no harm come to him, they changed their minds and said, he is a God. Let me say this. And I want you to hear this always, saints. Please keep this in mind. God is a God that deals with humble people. God does not deal with prideful people. The word says a haughty spirit goes before destruction and pride before a fall. If you want to see a person that's surely going to crumble and there's a person of pride, God will always humble the proud. But let me say this, guys. God has a throne set up in heaven for one and nobody sits on his lap. God praises or heals. And that's why I'm so fond of saying and teaching that we at Firm Foundation, we have, I have the people of Firm Foundation on a spiritual diet. And the spiritual diet says we will not steal, we will not borrow, we will not lust after the Lord's praises. They are heels and they are heels alone. God has a throne that's set up only for one and nobody sits on his, show, nobody sits on his lap. So the point that I'm making is this when I say that. The point that I'm making is you see where they changed their mind because they seen something they never seen before and they tried to make him a god. There are some times where you find yourself in a mess and in your head you know it's all over. But yet God and his divine power bring you out with a strong hand. Now you want to write a book about how you did it. You want to go on a talking tour about how you brought yourself out of this. You want to say how you pulled yourself up by your bootstraps when you know there's no, no set of boots that you could have had. There's no strength you have that could have gotten you out of that. It was God that delivered you out, but yet you won't give him his praises. You want to take those for yourself. Why? Why would you do that? All God wants is us to obey him and worship him. And if you do these things, there's no good thing will God withhold from you. But now these same people that called him a murderer, the same people now is calling him a God. Why do you need affirmation from barbarians, ignorant people? Why do you need affirmation from them? God has already told you who you are. When you know whose you are and who you are, you're not worried about what people think or say. The reason why so many people have low self-esteem, because they don't know who they are. When you know that of uh, 8 billion people on the face of the earth, God says you are fearfully and you are wonderfully made. 8 billion people and not a one like you. Imagine that. So when you know your uniqueness, you know who you are, you know whose you are, and when you know your purpose and what you're called to do, baby, let me tell you something. You move in a confidence. Now, some people may not know you and look at it and say you're arrogant. But once they get to know you and watch you, they say, no, it's not arrogance. It's confidence because you know what God has called you to do. And you know that if you do what God has called you to do, God is going to make it happen what he has called you to do. But the problem is so many of you are not moving on what God has called you to do. So you're not seeing God do anything. God says, why are you waiting on me? When I'm waiting on you. Get about the business, people. God called you to teach. Start the teaching. God called you to sing. Start the singing. God called you to shout, baby. Show everybody how to get it done. Now, it's a muscle. It may start out. It may not be good at all. But keep working that muscle. And watch what it turned out to be. So God loves you. And he cares for you in that situation. But you need to understand and keep it in mind all the way. Keep it in mind all the way. That no matter what people say about you, give God his time because people haven't seen something before. So if they've never seen it, God is going to make sure that when you are rightfully standing with him, people are going to see what God already sees in you or what God has put in you. God is going to bring it out. And so that's what it was with, um, that's what it was with Paul right there, guys. Um, okay. Um, 
Yeah, that's why I was just uh, a couple of notes that I was making. Don't make yourself or find yourself uh, stealing God's praises. They're his. So when people call you a God, quickly give God his praise. Give God his praise. Not um, a false praise. Not a false, um, what's it called when people come up and say, well, you was, it was just amazing. Amazing how you was doing. I mean, I've never seen nobody. No, no, no. It's just, uh, oh, praises be to God. I mean, God, God, he blessed me tremendously, but praises be to God. You see those type of people. They get that uh, that false humility. You you get sick when you say, "No, I just I thank God I'm so humble." What? So you look at this madness and you say, "But what it is is when you see these things, people are like, man, you're God." No, no. Bless be God's name. But for the grace of God, that go. I I had no idea how I was going to. I didn't even know what I was going to say. And all of a sudden, I just opened my mouth and this came out. God's word has spoken. Open your mouth and I will speak for you. Give God his praise. And the more praise you get God, the more things God would allow you to do on his behalf. God will call you to do things on his behalf. So don't you worry about what people, the same people that try their best to put a word out there about you saying that you are a murderer is the same ones will turn around and look at you and say you are God. Flaky people do flaky things. But if you build your reputation up on flaky, you will be just that flaky. But you got to trust God every single step of the way. Now, here's the thing you need to know, because I was pointing out a, um, pointing to a thing here in verse number seven. Listen at this right here. In the same quarters was possessions of the chief man of the island, whose name was Publius, who received us and lost us three days. Courteously. Lodged us three days courteously was very generous now let me show you something I looked at here look at this again in the same quarters was possessions of a chief man of the island whose name was Publius so the chief person of the island being Publius was the leader the leader well you can usually tell a people by their leader a jacked up leader produced jacked up people. And so look at, you know, look at the difference. Well, you can see where the people got their, um, if you would, their hospitality from. Look at verse number two again. Verse number two. And the barbarous people showed us no little kindness, for they kindled a fire and received us every one because of the present rain and because of the cold. So you had people that was willing to serve. Why? Go back then to verse number seven. Because the leader was a server. If you're around a bunch of arrogant leaders, you're going to have some arrogant people. Look at it again. In the same quarters was possessions of the chief man of the island whose name was Publius, who received us and lodged us three days courteously so when he said they took care of them they took care of them for three days this leader served them now the people act like the leader if you want to know if you see a people and the way they act go check out the leader now not always you got some that they, they ain't out the oven yet they ain't quite finished being cooked so they may be a little squirrely that's the flaky one that's okay. We're going to harden them in the word of God. But right now, what you need to understand is the Peter, people was acting like their leader. So saints, I pray that something was said that was beneficial to you today with our Bible study. So we're going to mark this and let's pray. Father, we honor you, we bless you, and we thank you for this opportunity that you have given us once again to study the word of God together. Oh, Father, my Father, I plead the blood of Jesus right now. Bless thy people that the things that they have heard tonight, they are able to take this and apply this to their life. Lord, I want to say it is an honor. It is truly an honor for me. A man that deals or struggle, Lord, struggles with being one that's out in the front. Lord, I thank you that even with a spirit of glossophobia, I have a confidence of speaking to your people because it is not me, it is you. I just want to say thank you, Lord, for allowing me to teach your people. Thank you, Lord, for the Holy Spirit that opens up my understanding and put it in such a way 
that the people of God can hear your word and apply it to their lives. Do not let your word go wasted. Let your people hold on to this, Lord, dearly, that they may be able to chew on this until we come together again, that we can then begin to give more word that the people of God may chew on that to grow. Thank you, Father, for hearing this prayer. Now, I believe by faith that you have honored this request. For I ask this, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. Hey, guys, I just want to tell you, it's an honor for me that God has given me to be able to teach you the word. Yes, I deal with glossophobia, and that's a fear of public speaking. Um, always thinking about mistakes and thinking way ahead. Sometimes I'm talking over myself and completely forgetting things. But that's what happens. It's a proven fact. That's what happens when a person gets nervous. Um, the pace pick up. And it's almost like a hyperventilation. But it's okay. You know, you keep going forward. And the more and more you do this for God, the better and better you get at it. Keep me in prayer. Now, with that said, let me ask. Is there anyone out here who do not know Jesus as your Lord and Savior and would like to know him as your Lord and Savior? If you're that person that has listened to the message tonight for whatever reason you came across this page or channel or you've been listening for a while and you say, it's time for me to give my life to Christ. I, I know that God is speaking to me. If you're that person, I am excited because I want to walk you through God's plan of salvation. Now, before we move any further, let me ask, is there anyone, anyone out here, you once knew Jesus as your Lord and Savior and you turned and you walked away for whatever reason you said that's it? You throw in the towel, you walked away, but you could not stop God from just speaking to your heart. You couldn't stop God from just calling you in your head. And you say, you know what? I just want to get back home. If you're that person, I want you to come and hold hands with me with the person that never knew Christ. And let's go before the throne of grace. Just repeat after me. Say, Father, I thank you for this opportunity. Lord, I thank you for this door that you have opened before me. And I take full advantage of it by walking through this door. I want to right now, of my own free will, repent, Lord, for the life of sin that I have been living. Forgive me, Lord, for living your life my way. I ask you, Jesus, to wash my, wash my life, cleanse my heart. Bless me, Lord, that I may be in right standing with you. I right now, according to your word, Confess with my mouth that Jesus, he is Lord. I right now, Lord, of my own free will, believe in my heart that you, God, has raised Jesus from the dead. According to your word, I am saved. So I ask you, Jesus, that you may come into my, heart, my heart, sit on the throne of my heart, and I will serve you all the days of my life. Thank you, Lord, for saving me. Thank you, Lord, for saving me. In Jesus' name, amen. If you have prayed that prayer, welcome to the family of Almighty God. Welcome home. It's good to see you. Now, you may ask, what do I do now that I have given my life to Christ? When well, you find a good Bible-believing church and you get in it, sit down and listen and grow. Now, you may even ask and say, well... I don't know what a true Bible-believing church is. I've never been a Christian or in church. Or you may say, well, now I'm kind of wounded with church right now, and that ain't what I want to do right now. Okay, well then, stay right here with us, and we'll continue growing you into the Word of God to where God can mend that wounded heart where you can then be able to go back into the fellowship of people. Or God may take the scales off of your eyes and the veil off of your head whereby you are able to see and God may lead you into a place to where the word of God is being preached and you can fellowship with saints. You may say, well, okay, then what does it take for me to be a member of Firm Foundation? Two things. One, we ask, are you willing to obey the rules and the regulations of this ministry so as long as it lines up with the word of God, you say, well, yeah, I'm willing to do that. Well, do you believe God can save you or do you, do you believe that God wants you to be a part of this ministry? Welcome here. Welcome to Firm Foundation, a ministry that loves people right where they are and work with them to get them to where Christ wants them to be. Now, if you made that decision, please put that in the comment section. We just want to know, saints. Now you may say, okay, I want to come and visit the ministry. Where are you located? 
We're located at 1851 Highway 66 South in the city of Kernersville, in the state of North Carolina. Put in your GPS. It'll get, get you right there to us, saints. Now, you may say, okay, then um, I want to support the ministry. How do I go about supporting the ministry? Well, you a QR code right here that you are able. You can go that way with the QR code, or you can mail it. Mail it to snail mail. Mail it by snail mail to the church. We're located at 1851 Highway 66 South in Kernersville. We look forward to seeing you guys right here on this page, right here on this channel. Wednesday nights, 7 p.m., Sunday mornings, 10 a.m., although we're in the building for Christian education at 9 a.m. We would love to see you there. Come, spend time with us. We are shaky handy, huggy people, and we'd love to shake hands and give you a hug in Jesus' name. Look forward to seeing you right here on this page, right here on this channel. The next time we're here, guys, you'll be blessed in Jesus' name.